Good morning, everyone. Sorry for the delay. Um, always um, some kind of technical difficulty, yeah. but um, we're happy <laughs> that you're all. Yes, we're happy that you're all here. I was way too relaxed and now I'm like, Ooh. Um, <laughs> so we are going to kick off today's webinar um, with Dawn. I don't know that she, if she introduced herself, but Dawn is our project manager from Mighty Cause. And we have been working together for the last six months and she has been amazing. And she's gonna really help us take um, this 10th anniversary of Gift for Good to the next level. And we are really excited. Um, so today we are going to be talking strategy, but just um, to, you know, give, if anyone wasn't here last week, I just wanna let you know, as I said, this is the 10th anniversary and we are trying to make this the biggest um, and most impactful Gift for Good yet. So we are really excited to learn um, some new strategies and have all the new capabilities that Mighty Cause offers. Um, so thank you all for attending and I hope that you get a lot out of this. So today we're gonna go over just the basics again, as we always do. So if it's uh, repetitive for some of you, I'm sorry, but we have to um, just introduce it in case we have new people. And so, um, we're, we'll go over that, and then Dawn's going to walk us through some ideas for how to really maximize the day, um, some marketing, some features that Mighty Cause offers that are really going to help you get um, more support and get the word out about um, the great work that you're doing and hopefully get more donations. So, and then we'll have a question and answer session. Perfect. Um, so quick reminder, if you do have a question um, during the presentation, please go ahead and enter it in the box. Um, we'll be answering questions um, uh, through that uh, Q&A box throughout the presentation. Um, and then, of course, we'll go back uh, at the end and, um, uh, and answer any questions that come up uh, as well that weren't answered previously. Um, so... Uh, so I want to review the uh, just the basics for um, Gift for Good this year. Uh, the giving day this year is May 2nd. Um, advanced giving begins on Tuesday, April 18th. Um, as a reminder, the uh, URL for the website is giftforgoodnla.org. Um, that's where you can go to um, uh, see the main homepage. That's where all the dollars raised for the overall day will be um, showing once the day starts. Um, uh, that's also where you'll be able to find links to resources, uh, the toolkit, um, uh, and then in the toolkit is all the marketing material and things like that. Um, so we'll kind of be talking about that today as well. Um, but always a good um, idea to you know get get familiar with uh, the main the main site um, and um, so that you know where to find everything and uh, can know where to access the resources and um, all that good stuff. So. Um, really quickly, what does, you know, what does my organization need to do um, to get ready for the giving day? Uh, so we highly recommend customizing your profile um, on the Gift for Good website. If you weren't able to attend um, the uh, getting started session two weeks ago, um, that gives a really thorough overview on all the tools that come with uh, your profile for Gift for Good this year. Um, it we kind of walked through how to customize the page. So I highly recommend going back and listening to that um, if you weren't able to, um, or you know, listen to it again if you really loved it. Um, the other thing you'll definitely want to do is plan for your fundraising campaign this year. We will go over uh, some um, you know, just strategy pieces in that planning process that you can start thinking about. Um, and then, of course, you'll want to promote um, if you don't tell anyone about it, no one will come to your page. So um, you'll want to we'll be talking through a couple pieces um, and ideas for promotion um, and then inviting uh, supporters to participate as peer to peer fundraisers. Um, we will be going through um, some of the peer to peer functionality pieces that Mighty Cause offers. Uh, so, you know, if that's something you're interested in, if that's something you've done before, but are kind of looking for a fresh take on it. Um, that'll be a good uh, part for you to really listen in. And then, of course, you'll want to raise money um, so that you can uh, win some of the prizes available. Um, new this year, uh, we have Mighty Cause has um, increased matching capabilities. Uh, we'll, we'll dig into matching um, a bit more during this webinar. Um, I In the last webinar that we did, we kind of walked through where to find it and what you, know, you could really do with it. 
Uh, but today we'll talk through, you know, um, how to get a, a match um, and then what you can do to uh, promote your match. Um, we also have uh, increased flexibility to customize your profile. Um, one of the differences between um, your previous platform and this one is you have the ability to edit your profile at any time. Um, it doesn't get locked locked down at all. Um, now that's, you know, I'm sure that's music to the ears of people who um, tend to procrastinate. Um, I still encourage everyone definitely customize your profile early. Um, that is, you know, the best way to really start getting ahead of things um, and familiarizing yourself with, you know, the tools that are available to you this year. Um, and, you know, once you're able to customize, you can add in, you know, you, you obviously have the ability to add in your logo. You can really be uh, visual with your mission section, your about section. So um, again, uh, you know, if you weren't able to attend last session, I highly recommend going back and listening through to it so that you can really see what you can do with your profile. Because, um, you can make it look, you know, as beautiful and comprehensive as you want, or if, you know, you have limited time, it still will look awesome um, with just the, you know, bare minimum done. So um, uh, we also have an extensive resource library available to you uh, in the toolkit for um, Give for Good this year. There are lots of links to different resources available to you, just like basics, um, you know, if you want to kind of take it to the next level, um, several links uh, with that. And then if, you know, you feel like you're a super pro at fundraising, um, there's some resources for you as well. So highly recommend uh, reviewing the resource library. Um, we also have uh, analytics uh, this year for you to kind of chew on. Um, so in the overview section of your profile, uh, you'll have some analytics, uh, you know, some quick stats that you can look at, you know, what have your page views look like on, um, you know, the gift for good giving day. Um, you can look at, you know, early giving um, throughout the giving day. Um, and then there's lots of different stats and interesting, um, you know, tidbits for you to kind of mull over to, to really hone in on, you know, how are people reacting to my page? What are they doing um, when they get here? And uh, just to help you make good decisions too about, you know, what you choose to do with your page and, you know, with your fundraising outside of Good for Good, for good as well. And then lastly, um, one of the new items this year as well is the donor retention report. Um, so that report is going to be really uh, helpful on the day of. Uh, it is a report you can find in your report section on your profile, and that report gives you the ability to view um, past donors to your Give for Good um, campaign, and it tells you right off the bat who you've retained, uh, in other words, who's come back and given, and who has not. Um, during the giving day. So you'll be able to very quickly see who you still need to reach out to to remind them to give again um, to this year's campaign. So we'll get into that report a little bit more today. Um, but I do also uh, talk through where you can find it in our last webinar as well. And I did say lastly for this one, but um, that is not true. We also have opportunities available for you this year. And that is a really cool feature that you have within your profile that allows you to uh, um, basically create uh, an opportunity, whether it's um, in-person volunteering, an in-person event, um, a virtual uh, volunteering or event, um, and it allows people to sign up for the event either through the, um, you know, through the Mighty Cost site or uh, through, you know, if you have an external uh, site you're using to collect like registrations or something um, for that event, you can um, add that in your opportunity as well. Uh, on the main uh, Gift for Good website, there is a specific opportunity search where people can go and, you know, members of the community can go and look for opportunities that, you know, you have added. So once you add it to your profile, it will automatically be included in that search. And um, you can just really get the word out um, about, you know, what you have going on uh, on the day of or, you know, um, uh, volunteer opportunities that are uh, extended. So, um, yeah, so that I go into that more in the last um, webinar, but um, you can find more information um, about the opportunities feature uh, um, by going to the support forum, which we'll talk about at the end of the webinar. Okay, Amanda, I'll let you talk through the rules and reminders. Okay, so for those of you who just joined, I do not have videos, so I apologize, but um, the rules and reminders about Give for Good. So Give for Good is an opportunity for you to raise unrestricted funds for your organization. 
Um, the reason that that is important is because when we issue your um, the dollars that you raise, they are in a form of a grant. And it is really important for us to track what our, um, the purpose of all of our grants are. And so in order for us to not have 215 different types of programs, we really have to make those for unrestricted purposes only. So what you do with those when you receive them, that is on you. But as far as the donor is concerned, and as far as Gift for Good and Community Foundation is concerned, those are for unrestricted purposes. So please try to be general in how you um, solicit people to give to your campaign during Gift for Good. And if you need some, some you know, help talking through some of that, I'm happy to do that for you. Um, okay. No benefits can be received from Give for Good donations. So you cannot um, receive sponsorship dollars where the donor is receiving um, a benefit, a table, a um, any sort of benefit to that sponsorship or membership. If you have members that don't get um, like any sort of good or service as you know a monetary one as a member, then that is okay. We just have to be, um, we can't, give things in return for gift for good donations. Um, we do send the tax receipt when the donor makes the gift. So you do not need to do that. You're, we encourage you, highly encourage you to send thank you notes, calls, emails, whatever that looks like for your organization. But we do not need, um, you do not need to send a tax receipt. And if a donor calls you at the, you know, next year, end of year, and wants their receipt, please refer them to the community foundation because we will provide that for them. Um, if you are hosting an event, which is um, encouraged, but if you're hosting a gift for good event for your organization, we do require that you have a certificate of insurance in place and those details about what you would need to send to your, um, your insurance company is on the website. And if you cannot find that, I will um, direct you to that. Ask a question, I can send the link in, the, in a little bit. Um, and that insurance is due to us by April 17th. The event really needs to be posted under the opportunities section. So one community foundation can know where to go throughout the day. We like to send a photographer. We like to come and see you. Um, and so please let us know and keep that on that opportunity section so that the community can know as well. Um, we're definitely always directing them to go learn about the opportunities, whether that is like she said, volunteering or a day of events or events um, during the giving period. Um, at all. So if you, uh, I think we're going to walk through where to post that, or we did that in the last one, but if you need help with that, I can walk you through that as well. All right. Okay. So now we're going to get into some of the campaign strategies uh, for that we're recommending for this year. Um, basically, you know, we want you to get the most out of your campaign. Um, it's a lot of work uh, to put this on. And so we want you to make sure that uh, you take advantage of it so that it just really benefits your organization. Um, some of the things that we're going to be uh, walking through today, um, we're going to be uh, walking through all the prizes um, and the Lanyap Fund available so that Hopefully everyone completely understands both of those things. Um, and that way you can kind of work your strategies around what uh, those opportunities are. We're going to be talking through, you know, what uh, goes into goal setting, making a good goal. We're going to be talking about matching grants, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraisers. Uh, we're going to be going through some marketing strategies um, as well as donor retention. Um, so those are the things we're going to cover today. Um, and uh, we have a lot more resources and ideas and, um, you know, other webinars that kind of deep dive into some of these topics um, in uh, the toolkit. So if you, you know, want to learn more uh, than, you know, what we might cover on this webinar about one of these topics, then I highly recommend um, going to that, uh, going to the toolkit and uh, just kind of exploring and seeing what you can find and um, just there's lots of resources available. So, um, you know, the more you learn, uh, hopefully the better you'll get at uh, some of these tactics. So, uh, Amanda. Okay. So, laying out fund. Most of you are familiar, but I learn new things every day from organizations who have participated in the past that, um, that they don't know. So, I'm going to try to dive into that a little bit more uh, in detail. So, the laying out fund is the bonus pool that is a Big incentive for you guys to participate. It's a big incentive for donors to give. 
Um, it is not a dollar for dollar match, but it is a pro rata, it's matched on a pro rata basis. So what that means is the amount of money that you raise, the percentage of the total giving that you raise is what you get in the percentage of the Lanyap Fund. So the Lanyap Fund is usually around $200, and thirty dollars, two hundred fifty thousand, um, not two hundred thirty dollars, two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. Some of that goes to prizes, but so that's kind of the pool, and we're always looking to grow that through sponsorships, and that is um, what I work on on the backside. So um, that is okay. So you must raise five hundred dollars to receive the Lanyap Fund minimum. The one thing that I just learned is some people don't know that every dollar raised during the two week period is what is counted for your um, the Lanyap Fund pool. So not just what you raise on Give for Good Day, but the, everything that you raise on the Give for Good platform during April 18th to May 2nd is what um, we calculate for your percentage of the Lanyap Fund dollars. If you receive a donation over $10,000, only that first $10,000 is counted in your, uh, for the pool. So anything above that is just, you know, if you were to raise 50, or someone donated 15,000 and that's a single gift. So if it's $15,000 gift, we're going to reduce that by 5,000. So only the 10,000 will count. Um, let me think if there's anything else. So I th if you have questions about the layout phone, we can go into that a little more in detail one-on-one um, -on -one or in the chat. Okay, prizes. Prizes are really fun. They are, you know, some people really take advantage of strategizing and coming up with um, great plans. And sometimes they tend to win the same prize every year because they really have, um, you know, targeted a couple of, of opportunities and they know how to strategize and win those prizes. So there are 24 prizes announced on the Gift for Good Day, and that is um, every hour on the hour we are announcing $500 prizes. And so um, we also have a, few, a couple of prizes that are based on what you raise during early giving and some social media prizes. And then we also have 10,000 in post gives day prizes, and that's performance based based on your um, budget category. So we break things down into small, medium, and large budget categories. So that is why we asked you for that information on registration. And so, um, you know, we try to compare you with your peers instead of expecting you to uh, compete with a larger organization or a much smaller organization. So um, those prizes, we have a sheet. It is on the Mighty Calls website. Um, if you go to the four nonprofits page, it's the tab at the top of the, um, the website, you can go directly to um, a couple of buttons that bring you to information about the Lanyap Fund and information about the prizes. We will also be sending out the document via email. So please look out for emails coming from us. They will, we will start sending more and more and they do come from MailChimp. So sometimes those get filtered out into your spam. So try to search your spam or your other or whatever box to just make sure you haven't missed anything and um, mark us as a safe sender. So hopefully it will come directly to your inbox. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. Um, and she did mention, but I just want to reiterate that uh, I would, this is just a brief overview of the prizes. Um, there are lots available. So I highly recommend if you haven't already done this, go to the Gift for Good website um, and click on that for nonprofits so that you can really familiarize with all of yourself with all of the prizes. Um, because that is one thing that is, you know, whether or not it's, you know, they, it's like super important to you to like win a prize. It, they're really, really good messaging opportunities uh, to keep your supporters engaged throughout the day. Um, and the fact that they offer, you know, that 24 are offered throughout the day. Um, I would just, I highly recommend going to the site and really familiarizing yourself so that you can at least pick out one or two um, to really go after uh, and get your supporters excited about them as well. Um, which kind of segues into my next uh, topic is goal setting. So 
Um, one of the most important things uh, as you're getting started or, you know, if you're in the middle of your planning for uh, this year's Give for Good is making sure that you set clear and concise goals for, you know, how you'd like your organization to perform during the giving day this year. Um, so, you know, the best, like start big first, right? Um, go ahead and what what would you love for your organization um, to raise during, uh, you know, the from early giving to uh, the give through the end of the giving day. Um, go ahead and, you know, uh, feel like if you need to set multiple uh, goals in terms of like, if we had, if we could dream, we'd love to hit this amount. Um, this amount seems a little more realistic. Um, you have the ability to set a goal on your profile page. Uh, and so that is a great way for you to, um, you know, kind of let your supporters know when you send them to your profile page uh, once giving starts uh, to say, this is what our organization is going after. This is what we'd love to raise. Um, here's why. And you can change your goal throughout the day. So if you reach your goal halfway through the day for one amazing work, um, you've, you know, you've really gotten the word out there and um, boots to the ground to get that goal hit. You can change your goal um, halfway through the day to, to your stretch goal um, if you have one. So um, first things first is you know, really set set that main goal that you're going after. Is it dollars raised? Is it number of donors? You know, is your main goal like I really want to get new donors coming in, um, so that I can utilize that during the rest of the year. Um, I have more people to reach out to uh, than I had last year at this time. So figure out what your main goal is, and then within that, set mini goals uh, to be able to um, hit those throughout uh, the time frame. So. You know, let's say your your main goal is to raise ten thousand um, uh, dollars for this year's campaign. Uh, maybe your mini goal is to raise at least four thousand dollars during the early giving period, and then the rest on the giving day. Um, so you can separate it out into small mini goals, and then you could even get more granular if you want. So um, if your main goal is ten thousand, you want to raise at least four thousand uh, within the early giving period, then that leaves six thousand on the giving day. So what does that look like? Um, do you want to raise at least three thousand by noon and then the other three thousand the rest of the day? Um, understanding your donors is a really good way to be able to understand when you should set those goals within the giving day. Um, if most of your donors are active in the morning, then that's probably when you're going to raise most of your funds. Um, so maybe your maybe your like during the day goal is bigger during that period of time. Um, if more of your supporters are active at night, then you can probably expect uh, you know, most of your money to be raised uh, during the evening hours of the day instead. So um, understanding your donors, um, understanding when, you know, you uh, like looking back on past campaigns to see, okay, when have I raised, uh, you know, the most money you, you have, we, um, sorry, my brain's like moving at a thousand miles a minute. Um, uh, your information from the last platform was migrated over. So you have all of your past donation history um, for at least, I think, the last couple of years. So you can go into your um, reports and uh, custom set the filters to custom dates so that you can download um, those uh, past donation reports and be able to see, um, you know, at generally uh, when your most amounts of money were raised uh, for those days to help you kind of um, understand a little better and uh, set those mini goals um, uh, for for the day of this year. Um, the one of the biggest reasons for setting the mini goals is they give you an opportunity to message your supporters and tell them, hey, we're really hoping to raise, you know, um, four thousand dollars during this early giving period. Um, we're so close. Please, you know, here's how much more we need left. Um, and here's what you can do to help us. Uh, and then same with during the day of it gives you those messaging opportunities to be able to go and say, hey, we really want to raise three thousand dollars by noon or we really want to raise, um, you know, a thousand dollars during this one hour. Um, these mini goals uh, also give you the ability to work in those prizes uh, that are available. So if you want to, you know, incorporate one of your mini goals with a prize that's available, that's, you know, sort of like a double message that you're sending your supporters. So um, you're not just, you know, blandly hitting everyone with email saying you should donate, it's give for good day. Um, you're giving them, you know, more tangible reasons of, hey, we have this goal. Hey, we have this 
prize that we're going after right now, um, it'd be really great if you could help us reach that goal or help us win that prize. Um, and people can, you know, people can connect with that. They can relate with that. And they, you know, your supporters want to help you. So, um, so make sure that you're clear and um, you uh, create manageable goals for yourself. You don't want to create, you know, one thing I don't recommend is creating like 50 goals. Uh, I would keep it at a manageable amount because, um, you know, you can only do so much during the day and uh, you really, you know, you really want to be able to take this day and have a good experience. And um, if you're setting realistic, manageable goals for yourself, then that will definitely help you out more than, um, you know, kind of reaching into the stratosphere to say, I'd love to raise a million dollars and uh, which I hope you all do raise a million dollars, but um, uh, just having those manageable goals uh, will help you have a good time during the campaign as well, um, which, you know, your supporters will see that too. So um, use the mini goals to build excitement, generate interest, and of course, win prizes uh, for the day. Um, matching grants. So these next couple of slides are going to be more about uh, uh, ways that you can strategize around some of the features um, and uh, functions that are offered within um, your uh, uh, Gift for Good profile this year. One of them is matching grants. Um, we talked last or two weeks ago about you know where you can find matching grants, some of the capabilities that are included in matching grants. Um, today, uh, if you know if that's something you're considering, I want to talk through you know what where do you start. You know, where do you start with securing a matching grant? How do you promote a matching grant? What does that look like? Um, so some of the, uh, you know, we kind of broke it down into three, three steps, essentially. So prospect, cultivate, and ask. So first thing you'll want to do if you're thinking about um, uh, getting a matching grant for this year's Give for Good is, you know, who, who can supply the match for the day? Um, do you want to go to all your board members and have a group match? Um, maybe they all put in a certain amount of money. Um, and then, you know, you can create a match that says this match is from our board. Um, another great uh, prospect are your major donors. If you have a major donor who usually gives, you know, at a different time of year, let's say the fall, um, or, you know, maybe they always give to you on Giving Tuesday, um, I, I would go ahead and approach them and let them know about this opportunity, let them know that there is a way for them to um, donate at a different time of year, um, the least you can do is ask. Um, your major donors are your major donors for a reason. They support your organization. They uh, connect with your organization, and um, you know, even though they they give, you know, typically give only one time a year, um, there there there's an opportunity there for them, and they, you know, um, I would not hesitate to ask them um, to, you know, uh, if they want to be a part of this. The the worst they can say is no. Um, and then, you know, then they say no and they give to you at their normal time and you appreciate that and you're so thankful for them. But um, these, these matching grants that we have here um, give you a good opportunity for them to either be visible. You could write them as anonymous if they prefer, but it is a very good opportunity for them to get involved at another time of the year and kind of get even more ingrained with your organization. Um, uh, and you know the uh, the mission that you have. Um, another uh, 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 potential prospect opportunity are corporate sponsors. Um, so uh, if you have you know a um, a business or a couple businesses that you know support you, um, or you know you've been thinking about you know kind of branching out into this area, this is a really great way um, for you to even like approach them to sort of get that relationship started. Um, uh, you know, your, any like local businesses or anything, um, that, you know, you have a relationship with, um, or interested in having a relationship with, this is a great way, uh, for you, uh, a great way for them to be involved in your campaign, um, it, which is it, at like a, a bit of a higher level than, uh, just, just giving a donation. Um, and at the very least, if they say no to sponsoring a matching grant, you move on to the next opportunity and they donate to your campaign anyway. And that's always appreciated as well. Um, after you've um, gone ahead and found your sponsor for the match, um, then the next thing you'll want to do is um, cultivate. Uh, so basically what that means is you'll want to communicate 
um, with your uh, major donor or your board members or whoever is sponsoring the match and um, learn from them, you know, you know, what, what makes you want to be involved in our organization? What are you passionate about? Because you might be able to take that and um, use that to promote the match as well. So um, really communicating and um, cultivating those relationships with the opportunity of a matching grant um, is step number two. Um, step number three is ask. So you're asking them, um, you're appealing to their interest, you're appealing to the sponsor's interest. So um, let's say that they want to help you get on board with, um, let's say you have a goal of uh, 25 brand new donors. Um, that is something that, you know, letting them know if we got 25 brand new donors and they came in at, you know, this level, uh, that would help our organization in these ways. Um, that would help us to be able to grow in these other areas, these other campaigns, um, because not only people come in at the donor level and then, you know, um, as you, as you, you know, um, solicit them, as you, you know, kind of grow within your organization, um, help them, um, help them to come into your organization more. Um, then they, you know, they go from donor, they go to fundraiser, they go to volunteer and um, they really, uh, kind of take your interest at heart too. So you'll want to um, ask those potential sponsors um, that you've, you know, kind of prospected and see what are they interested in? Um, how can you format the match in a way that is going to make them happy uh, so that they come back and do it again the next year? Um, so promoting your match. After you've gotten that match set, you're ready to go. Um, you've entered it in on the site. Um, well, so that's the first thing. So you want to add your match to the platform. So um, you can do that in uh, in your profile under the fundraiser section. There is a matching grant section. And then from there, there's a button that says create your match. You can click on that and kind of fill out um, all of the details. So um, you'll want to add uh, the sponsor's name. Um, you can always say anonymous um, if they don't want uh, their name out there, but Add, adding the um, sponsor's name. Um, you can add an image to the match. Um, I highly recommend doing that because it makes it look cleaner when um, the tile comes on your page. Because uh, uh, we do have some um, promotional pieces that like interactive pieces that come with a matching grant. When you add it to the site, one, as you can see in the picture, is that little like match icon on your donate button. And then at the bottom of your profile, we also have a tile that kind of explains the details of the match and shows the image um, that you can, like the picture that you uploaded. If you have a corporate sponsor, this is a really great way to kind of uh, put their uh, information out there. Um, and so that way it's sort of a, um, you know, you're kind of promoting your own um, sponsor. They're looking more philanthropic um, and it's sort of a win-win situation. So um, if you, you know, if it's an anonymous sponsor, um, if it's, you know, a group of people who are sponsoring this match, then um, I would just add your organization's logo. Um, so you have something in there and um, it looks nice. Um, so uh, there's lots of different settings and avail um, um uh, options available for your matching grant. So uh, we do um, on the matching grants uh, page on your profile, um, if you click on the little uh, gray question mark box in the bottom right, uh, it, it'll bring up all the support articles uh, connected with matching grants. So if you click on like our matching grants FAQ, um, or like, uh, you know, we do deep dive into matching grants, that will kind of explain what all the settings are explain, you know, the different items that uh, you can do to set up the um, the matching grant and uh, um, and then that way uh, you can set it up properly. Um, and then I mentioned the engagement features, uh, the donate button, the tile. So one of the great things about um, the tile on your profile, you can take a screenshot of that and share it on social media and say, look how close we are to our uh, reaching our match goal. Um, we just need, you know, X many dollars raised to meet the match. We just need X number of donors to meet the match. Um, so that's a really great way for you to share about your matching grant on social media and make it visible um, or visual. Uh, and then, um, you know, rolling into that, um, hype up your match uh, in email campaigns and on social media and make sure you let the donors know that you have a live match going on um, during the day. Um, so next, I want to get into the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising capabilities uh, that you have um, with your profile this year. Um, at the very basic, you know, why would you want to engage your supporters in this way? 
Um, peer to peer fundraising is a really, really great, great way to reach and acquire new donors. Um, they're basically doing the work for you. Um, if you reach out to a volunteer and ask them to be a fundraiser, they sign on as a fundraiser, create a page, and then they reach out to their friends and family who you don't have a connection with, who you don't really know, but they do their friends and family come and donate to their page. And then you suddenly have, you know, 10 new donors that you didn't really have access to before, but now you do. Um, it's also a great a great way for um, your current supporters to kind of take their uh, um, you know connection with your organization to the next level. Uh, they can share their personal impact stories. Um, they can write you know here's why I'm fundraising. Um, and, you know add pictures of them volunteering. Add pictures of them you know with uh, your organization and any like outreach you've done. Um, another reason um, which you know, going to reaching and acquiring new donors is it, it really amplifies the traditional outreach. So you're doing a little less work. You're doing the, you know, the groundwork to get people who you're already connected with um, fundraising for you, but then they're reaching out and, um, you know, uh, going out to their friends and family, which ultimately allows you to raise more funds and kind of work, uh, work a little less hard than it would be to, you know, uh, sending out constant emails um, and then hoping that, um, people, you know, you're reaching new donors that way or, um, uh, and then it all cultivates stronger supporters. So um, once people kind of go that next level with you, they have a more ingrained sense of um, uh, loyalty to you because they've, they've taken, they've gone out on a limb um, to do the fundraising to, you know, to sign on and ask their friends and family. It's, you know, it's a little, um, you know, it's a little scary for people who have never done it before. And so being able to, um, you know, have them help them to go that next level with you is, um, is another great way to, to uh, reason to do peer to peer fundraising. So um, we have two uh, types of peer to peer fundraising that we're going to talk to you about today. Um, the first is uh, the individual peer to peer fundraising. So that's the, you know, one person is coming and creating an individual fundraising page um, for your organization. Um, who would you ask to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? Um, board members make great peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Uh, they're already connected to your organization. Um, they would be great people to ask to say, hey, would you kind of take it up this next level um, and show your support for Give for Good Day and uh, sign on to be a fundraiser. Volunteers are great people to ask. Your staff are also great people to ask. And then, um, you know, depending on what kind of organization you are, if you have program alumni, those are also great people to ask um, uh, to become peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your organization during this campaign. Um, as I mentioned before, it can be a little scary for people who have never done it before. So you'll want to make sure that you're providing them resources, tips, email templates um, that they can then use uh, to just make it really easy for them um, to go out to their friends and family. Um, one of the things that I recommend is help make it manageable for them. So one of the ways to do that is to create a fundraiser template uh, to help streamline the setup process for them. Um, you can create a fundraiser template within your fundraising tools section um, in your profile. Uh, you can set up pretty much everything for them um, ahead of time. And then they can, when they create uh, you know, their fundraiser, they can go ahead and, and personalize it uh, to themselves. But that's really helpful to kind of get them started. The other item that I recommend is help make it manageable for them by breaking it into chunks. So, you know, if they're brand new to this, say, hey, if you just email um, or reach out to five people and ask them for $10, that's amazing. Um, for one, that gets you 10 extra dollars you didn't have before. And then for two, it gets you 10 um, or five new people that uh, you didn't have access to before as well. So they've already done um, a great, you know, a great uh, thing right there. And five is manageable. And then, you know, next step, reach out to five more um, and, you know, break it into small chunks for them so it doesn't feel super overwhelming. Um, and, it, and you know, they, they feel like, okay, I can do that. I can reach out to five people. I can reach out to two people. Um, that's two people you didn't have before. So help make it manageable for them. Provide them, you know, email templates and some tips um, that they can, they can use to, to benefit your organization. Um, the next uh, piece of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising that I want to talk about today is team fundraising. So this is sort of the like peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising 2.0, uh, so like next step um, uh, that you can take advantage of to, uh, this year if you want. Um, so team fundraising is really is fun because it can create competition um, and, you know, it provides incentives within the team fundraiser. So you can see an example of a team fundraiser page here. 
um, you can see team pages come with their own leaderboard. So um, it, you know, it kind of, uh, it creates a more of a group effort. Uh, so it might be easier for people who have never fundraising fundraised before to be, you know, feel that camaraderie, feel like they're part of the team and then get that competitive uh, aspect to it too. Um, you can create a page template uh, for these pages as well uh, for easy onboarding for the, you know, team members. Um, and then uh, one thing that you can do as an organization is, you know, make sure that you're communicating with everyone who's set up peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for you um, to keep them engaged, keep them encouraged, remind them what your goals are, remind them of what prizes you're going after so that they're, you know, working uh, parallel with you uh, to help you reach the goals that you've set for the day. Um, one idea for a team fundraiser is, you um, uh, you know, if you have board members who have never fundraised before and they're not really sure if that's what they want to do um, and they're like, I'd rather just donate. Um, one thing that you can do is um, uh, create a board team uh, for your board and just try to create that uh, that competitive aspect um, just among the board. So you have your board team that's fundraising for Give for Good and then each board member has their own um, individual fundraising page that makes up that team. Um, and then, you know, you can, if you want to reward them with prizes, um, you can, um, you know, if you want to just give them bragging rights, then that's great. Um, so depending on what your, you know, uh, your board uh, camaraderie looks like, uh, this might be a great idea uh, for some organizations to, um, you know, really, uh, you know, create that uh, internal competitiveness uh, amongst, uh, you know, the board and uh, create a team a team peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer page for uh, for that this year. So one idea, uh, do with it what you will, but um, you know you can really get creative with um, with these pages uh, to to really benefit your organization and um, uh, just make it fun. So um, okay, so getting into some um, marketing uh, email and social media strategies. Uh, when you send out your emails. Um, uh, you'll want to make sure that you're sending out short and easy to understand messages. Um, so a lot of people nowadays will read their emails on their phones. Um, and it's, you know, I, I feel like I really sound like a millennial, but it's a lot of work to just like scroll a lot. So uh, make sure that your uh, emails are short um, and they're easy to understand. You want to make it super clear so that when people are uh, getting the email from you, they're, they know you want them to donate. That is what you're asking them to do. Um, so uh, the other thing that you'll want to do is um, if you have the time, um, do your best to uh, tailor the message to the audience. So um, segment out your email list, you know, here are your volunteers, here are your, you know, low level supporters, here are your high level supporters, um, and, you know, use a slightly different message for each audience um, to really help them hit home. So, you know, you don't want to email, you know, a, a send an email to everyone asking for $25. And that email also goes to your donors who you know will give you $500. Um, you wanna make sure that you're asking them for $500 as opposed to $25, um, since you know that they've done that for you in the past. Um, the other thing you'll wanna make sure that you do is uh, do your best to pre-schedule emails uh, going out to your supporters. Um, with, with these you know, uh, giving days, uh, you'll always want to have some day of emails in your back pocket. Um, you know, if you, uh, you know, any updates to people uh, on your goal, on, you know, your match that you set up, um, things like that. You'll want to have those types of emails in your back pocket. But for any emails that you can pre-schedule, um, definitely do it. Whatever you can do to take the lift off of you that day, um, do, do it. Uh, it'll, you'll thank your past self. Um, you'll give your past self a pat on the back and um, it'll make things run a lot smoother when you're not, you know, worried about, uh, you know, having to, uh, you know, send out emails at specific times of the day if you're able to pre-schedule them um, ahead of time. And then um, one of the most important things is when you send your email, make sure that you include a link to donate. Um, you will be, you'd be surprised at how many emails that I've seen from nonprofits who will say you should donate and then they have no link in the email. So people are like, okay, but now what, you know, where do I go? Um, so you'll always, always, always want to make sure that you um, include the donation link uh, with your email. Um, for your Give for Good uh, donation link, you can either send your donors uh, the link to your profile page 
um, which, you know, when you're on your profile page, it's in the URL bar, you can copy and paste that into your email or, you know, attach it to a button in your email. Um, but you could also send them directly to your donation form. So your choice, um, uh, but in your uh, checkout flow in your profile, when you're customizing that um, on your, you know, donation form, there's a button up in the top right uh, that you can uh, click to automatically copy the direct donate link um, uh, to, in, to send out with your emails or on your social um, as well. Uh, and then if, if you're uh, able to and you have the time, it's, it's really awesome to be able to A-B test your messaging. You know, what, what kind of uh, features and functions in my message, you know, the subject line, um, the, you know, opening line, uh, the, the ask that I have, what really gets people to respond to the emails that I send out? Um, so if you've done A-B testing before, um, then, you know, feel free to, to use your findings in this. Um, and if you've never done it before, then don't do it for this one because you don't want to, I, I don't recommend doing something like completely new when we're having, a, you know, a transition year like this, but um, look into it after Give for Good um, uh, to see if that's something that would be helpful for you. Um, the other thing I always recommend is when you're setting up your emails to pre-schedule them, make sure you're pre reviewing the mobile experience as well. Like I said, you'll want to do short, easy to understand messages and most, well, a lot of people are looking at their um, emails on their phones. Um, so you'll want to make sure that the phone looks good um, on desktop and on mobile. Um, social media strategy. So um, this, this is going to be, you know, more of your like day of um, uh, uh, piece that you'll probably be in more. Um, you'll still want to pre-schedule as many posts as possible, um, but where where do you as an organization have your biggest audience? Um, wherever that is, that is where you'll want to spend most of your time posting. Um, that is where you'll get the most views, the most um, you know interaction, engagement um, with your audience. So make sure that you go ahead and post where your audience is. Um, and then, you know, as with pre-scheduling emails, anything that you can set up ahead of time, I definitely recommend doing so that you can spend more time on the day of engaging real time with your supporters, um, interacting with them on the giving day, um, helping them out, encouraging them to donate um, and things like that, responding to any comments that they that they post, um, thanking them for any of their donations. Um, that's what you'll want to spend more of your time doing as opposed to creating and trying to come up with new um, new social posts. Um, if you have the budget for it, um, I recommend boosting posts. Um, that also is helpful in you know, getting people to follow your organization, which hopefully will turn into donors. But um, if you're able to budget for boosted posts and um, it's, it's pretty cost-effective um, and gets a wide uh, reach. So um, I would recommend looking into that um, if you haven't already decided to do it. Um, the other item that you'll want to think about is um, uh, making sure that you put together creative and engaging content. So with the algorithms that the social media companies have, anything with images, videos, live streaming, those will get higher, like uh, a higher feed um, views than just plain text. So if you have any, you know, um, I, any like images, pre-recorded videos that you're able to post multiple times a day, um, do that. If you're able to live stream on the day of, then way to go. Um, that is a, a really exciting way for people to just get like, you know, a firsthand look at your organization. Some I've seen organizations do, you know, kind of like a walkthrough of their facilities um, as they're live streaming on the day of and just, you know, reminding, reminding people to donate um, you know, uh, I've seen other people, um, do a live stream of like, they'll thank a handful of donors halfway through the day, or they'll give an update on where they're at. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that those get good engagement, not only during the time, but it saves afterwards. So if you, you know, you live stream and not a whole lot of people watch, that doesn't mean more people aren't going to watch later. So, um, definitely think about it as well. Um, I've also included some, um, uh, some social media tool, uh, um, you know, examples for you. So if you, you know, want to look into like auto-generating media captions, um, utilizing design templates and graphics, 
um, analyzing and managing social media posts, scheduling that stuff. Um, here's a couple examples of um, other platforms out there that can help with um, all of those pre-scheduling and you know just being creative about it uh, so that you get to use a little less brain power on that and a little more brain power on uh, trying to raise money on the giving day. Um, and then lastly, uh, donor retention. So uh, I mentioned this before, and I mentioned it in the webinar two weeks ago, but you'll definitely want to utilize the donor retention report um, on the day of. So this report is going to give you a very clear and quick snapshot of who you have retained from last year and who you have not. So you'll be able to um, see everyone you haven't retained. You can download a list. You can upload it into your you know, email service. You could you can also send individual emails um, uh, right from the retention screen. Uh, and then it, it tells you which donors and how much they've given last year. So you can say, hey, Bob, it looks like you haven't given yet this year. You gave $50 last year. Would you consider giving $50 again? Um, or even better, uh, if you're able to give $75 this year, that would help with X, Y, and Z. So utilizing and um, digging into that retention report um, at a couple of times during the day to make sure that everyone from last year um, as many people as you can have donated again for this year um, is definitely a great tool uh, to be able to um, uh, retain those donors and increase those funds um, for your event during the giving day. Okay, uh, we're going to get to questions in just a minute, um, but I wanted to make sure that you all were aware of the support that you have on the giving day. Um, uh, you do have um, the technical support um, our support team is here for you now, um, and they're uh, here for you uh, 24 hours on the giving day. The uh, gray support bubble uh, within your account um, will link you right to them. Um, it also brings up relevant uh, support articles for whatever page you're on too to help kind of um, help you, you know, through that route as well. Um, program support, if you have any questions about the program itself, the Lanyap Fund, um, then you should email giftforgood at cfnla.org. Um, our support forum, which are our articles, our health articles on lots and lots of topics, support.mightycause.com. Um, and then our phone support is also available Monday through Friday, eight to four central. Um, and their number is right there as well. Um, and um, we have one minute. So uh, I apologize for not leaving too many time, uh, too much time for questions, um, but we'll make sure we answer as many questions as possible. And um, if I see uh, lots of questions that are frequent um, and the same, then we'll make sure to add those to the FAQ as well. Um, are you going to read them or do you want me to? Um, you got them? I'm not sure which ones I've, uh, which which ones have you answered? Okay, well, some were in the beginning, so I think some of them have been answered. Okay, we did discuss how to create a template. Um, I think we walked through that more in the first one, like the actual um, process of creating that. Yes, but if you need specific help with that, you can reach out to uh, Mindy Call Support or me, and I can help as well. Advanced giving is the two weeks prior to give for good. Well, it starts two weeks before the day of. So that is when the platform will start accepting donations. Um, I highly encourage you to take advantage of that time because a lot is going on on give for good day. And it is just really great to get a good head start. So start reaching out to people the minute that giving opens um start doing your fun your facebook posts all of that and that um will all of that applies to the lanyard fund as i mentioned so it's just a great way to get a good head start um how to change the url you figured that out that is in your general settings and so i have had a lot of people reach out about um hey my link is not the same as it was before or hey my link is showing this I really wanted to say this, and you can change that as long as it's not taken by another um, organization on the Mighty Cause platform. So uh, we can also work through that individually if you need help. I've helped a few people. So um, please reach out if you're having a hard time with that. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer template, will it create a link? And can the peer-to-peer -peer generate a link 
to give that could be put in a text or email and not just Facebook? Yes. So yeah. when somebody creates a peer-to-peer -peer page um, for your organization, uh, for one, it will create their own unique page so that it's like nestled under your organization page. So it's benefiting you um, on your profile page. It will show up in, um, there's a campaign section that you can allow to be seen. Um, and that it'll, it'll show up as a tile there. You can click on it. It'll go to that person's page. It, when they create a fundraising page for you, it will create, they will have their own unique link that they can then share in email. They can share on all their social media platforms. Um, they, they can, um, uh, customize the link as well. Um, if they, you know, wanted to get a little fancy, um, but yes, it will create their own, their own link, but all funds that they raise will be counted towards your gift gift for good day um, program to, uh, uh, goal. Okay. And the last couple of questions, um, let's stay within the peer to peer real quick. So are the templates for individual and team fundraising the same or are they different? Um, so the page layout is different. Uh, so an individual does an individual page will not have a leaderboard um, it'll be uh, a picture and uh, they'll have the opportunity to have their own individual goal if they want. Um, they will also have the ability for themselves to um, have like an about section uh, to tell, you know, why they're fundraising, um, which the team, the team um, style page has that as well, but it's a slightly different layout. Um, and the, the team page has the functionality to allow people to join the team to, so it has like team members, whereas the individual page is just the individual and no one else can join that specific page. Hopefully that. Do, makes sense do the they answer. have to, okay, so the templates, if you create a template for a peer to peer an individual, does that, is that something that the team can also access or is that a separate template or do they have to have the individual page set up to become part of the team? Got it. So you don't have to have the individual page set up to become part of the team. And when a team page is created, you can create your own team template. So the, like the team admin could create a team template um, for their, like, people who are joining their team. So um, an individual can go to the team page and there'll be a button that says join. They can click that and then that will get them through the process of setting up a page that is within that team. So they're a team member now. Okay. Um, question about the platform processing fee. Um, there is there's a fee, there's a credit card processing fee, and then there's a platform fee. And so we average that's about 5%. Um, it's, um, so what we allow is for a donor to choose to cover that fee in the checkout. And I would say in the past, we've had about 70% that do cover that fee. If you have someone giving a large amount, they may not. Um, but, you know, we really try to encourage that. And a lot of people do take do that for the organizations. So just prepare for that. If the organization, if the donor does not cover it, it is taken out of your total. And that is what um, the land yacht fund will help cover all of that. And so that's just one additional reason that we do the land yacht fund. Okay. So give NOLA day is also on May 2nd. Have you seen organizations fundraise dually utilizing both gift for good and give NOLA day logos on their social media post? Um, I can't speak to that right now because I don't think we've seen a lot of that in the past. I think we are going to this year. We're going to see a couple of organizations doing both. So Dawn, do you have any um, examples of organizations that are in different areas of the state and have are part of different giving days? Well, so when that happens, I what I usually do is recommend that they pick one. It's really hard to do well when your focus is split. So I, I would, I would uh, take advantage of the one that best fits your organization. I, I mean, obviously I'm going to say you should totally do give for good because it's awesome. And we're utilizing our platform this year. Um, but I do not recommend um, splitting your focus between two giving days that just for one, it, it doesn't allow you to um, 
be fully in on one of them. And it, it can be confusing for donors when you're sending out two different links. Um, so my recommendation is always pick one, have that be your focus and go all in because that is what's going to help you be most successful. Um, cause as I'm sure you've experienced, like you would, you would never plan two different campaigns on the same day at any other time of year, right? Like you would never have two fundraising initiatives that were different and try and go out to your donors and think that you're going to be successful. So um, take that, you know, do with that what you will. But my advice is always pick one, go all in, have that be your focus. And, um, and then that, that to me, what I've seen is that's what makes people most successful um, instead of trying to, you know, split their focus and, um, you know, try and market both. Um, what I've seen from that is just, it just causes more confusion. People don't know exactly what you're asking for or, um, you know, where they're supposed to go. And um, it's just not as clean. So. Um, and just to can I continue on with her next question. Um, I, we are not having the conversation about changing our giving day. Um, in the past, we have really only served um nonprofits that are in the North Louisiana area. I know now we have a couple who are um, have locations in both. And so that is a challenge. And that's just something that we're going to have to, um, your organization is going to have to figure out like how to best um, contact your, your donors who support you in the various um, areas or the different areas, and then drive your NOLA people to one and your Shreveport uh, North Louisiana people to to give for good. So um, we can strategize with that, Shannon, off, offline, if you would like to reach out to me. Okay, so is was there a threshold, like no fees for a 5,000 dollar donation? No, um, there, there's a fee for every donation that's processed on the platform. The only um, opportunity for you to get a large donation without a fee is by having your donors set up a donor advice fund here at the Community Foundation and we can talk through that offline as well. I mentioned that in the last um, webinar. So please go back and watch that. It's at the very beginning. So you can kind of get a better understanding of what that looks like and how to um, go about that. And then if your organization had a donation page last year, do we have to redo the page again or edit the page? I'm not quite sure if what you mean by that. Are you talking about your profile, your organization profile, or a fundraiser, peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? Your organization um, profile will have pretty much every single thing that was on your page last year. Um, you should have already been you know, looking at that, making sure it's up to date. We migrated all of that over from the last site. But if it is a fundraising page, Dawn, yes. Am I correct that they would have to create that again? Yeah, so fundraisers were not migrated over. Um, just your uh, past donor history your profile admins, um, and then any like profile uh, elements that you had. So like, and about your mission, um, as many like images as we could, your logo. Um, so your your profile page should look somewhat similar. I mean, obviously the, the two sites are not the same, so the layout might be slightly different, um, but that should just require some updating. Um, you do have increased capabilities this year with customization. So um, like in your checkout flow for your actual donation form that you can customize that you you'll will, will not have been carried over from last year. Um, and so you'll have the ability to customize that. But anything that you set for this year, like you won't have to redo next year unless you want to. Um, so that'll that'll be an advantage for next year is you can pop in, change a few things if you want, and then be good to go for the for the giving day and focus more on, um, you know, planning, scheduling, um, things like that. Okay. So I think that is everything. If we missed something, um, I apologize. Um, thank you all for being here. And please, um, you know, if you feel like you didn't really understand something, reach out to us, we can help. Um, and then go back and watch the last video. You definitely want to know how to um, just all the capabilities and the functionalities and how to manage the site. That is the most important part of um, the event. So 
if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thanks, everyone. Thank have a good you. day.